All right, so I'm Gemma O'Brien and today I'm going to talk through some of the processes behind my calligraphic techniques which make up some of my typography practice. So the technique I'm going to show you kind of the behind the scenes of today is working with balsa wood and ink. So this is kind of an example of the final product where we'll get to. Um, so I'm just going to talk through the stages of kind of coming up with the style and kind of the experimentation that led to this technique. So basically I started off with my lettering practice kind of working with brush lettering. So this is kind of a style that's based on a pointed brush alphabet uh, using a pointed brush pen. And after a while of kind of working with this technique for different kind of client jobs and artworks, I wanted to experiment with using a similar style but mixing up the way that it looked. So adding a bit of texture and that's when I started to experiment with balsa wood. So the basic structure of these letter forms uh, is kind of, it's a cursive, so it's kind of like quite free. You have a lot of movement in the letter forms. Um, so I'm basically going to show you the, the structure of the letter forms with the brush pen and then move into the balsa wood. So usually when I start, I'll have some kind of guidelines um, drawn up on my page. And these ones here are based on the size of the pointed brush pen. So the X height of the letter forms is quite large because the tip of the pen is also quite big compared to some of the smaller brush pens. So the angle that I've drawn in the pencil lines here is about 60 degrees. So that's quite, um, once you've got the initial line in there, you can kind of use that as a rough guide just to help you once you get started. And then often before actually moving on into the ink, I'll draw like a very loose pencil outline. So, and quite free in the movement of the letters as well. So right through from A to Z, as you can see on this one here, which has also got the order of the strokes drawn into it as well. So you've got your guidelines, you've got your pencil outlines, and often if you can either use tracing paper or you can use uh, a light box. And often I like to have them lined up like this. And then you take the brush pen and all the strokes are essentially based on this downward stroke, which is holding the full width of the pen. You can kind of practice by just drawing on a diagonal from the kind of a 45 degree angle, pulling from the top right hand corner to the bottom left hand corner like this. So that's the basic downward stroke. Then for the upward stroke, you're just using the tip of the pen. So it's like a light flick, controlled flick. And once you start to join those together, that's the basic up and downward strokes, which make up all the letter forms. So you can kind of see this all come together. Here, so if you think about, for example, the letter M, you've got the downward stroke, upward stroke, downward stroke, upward stroke, downward stroke. So basically these, two elements make up the core of a large majority of the letter forms, then the only other shape you really need is this curve which comes in from the A. And so on those downward strokes it's quite slow and then for the upward strokes it's a flick and then pressure, flick. So that's the basic kind of way that I would draw it with a brush pen. And once you move into the balsa, essentially the technique is the same. So you're still basing the downward strokes and the upward strokes on this thick and thin. The only difference is when you're working with a brush pen, it's kind of got this flimsy uh, kind of tip. And with the balsa wood, it's more controlled. So the downward strokes, you don't have to worry about the pressure. It's just exactly the same as the thickness of the balsa wood. So I'm gonna just move in now to show you how you cut the piece of wood. So balsa wood, basically, you can get it from art stores and it's usually used to make architectural models. I basically use it to cut my own nib so you can get a piece of wood like this and get, you know, hundreds of, of little calligraphy nibs that you can use. And then you just dip it in the ink and start to draw. So I'm gonna use the same guidelines that I've used for the brush alphabet, which is here. And the paper that I like to use with the balsa wood is not so much the transparency, but usually like a bond or a bank layout pad so that you can kind of start to see the texture in the ink as well. So I'm gonna tape that into place and you can see I've got a light box underneath here. 
which I'll turn on so that you can see the guidelines as well coming through. There we go, magic. Okay, so basically you get your balsa wood that's cut and these two sizes here are slightly different. So the thicker one, dip it into the ink. And you kind of start to see that you get this really nice texture in the wood. It makes an annoying noise though. So this one is slightly thinner and you can, you can adjust it as you go as well. So if I want to make this one slightly thinner, you can just cut it along. And that means that your downward strokes are kind of a lot thinner. So once you then actually move into the letter forms, which is the same as the brush strokes, you're still working on that angle. And when you do the upward stroke, you're almost stopping and adjusting to just use the tip of the balsa wood. So it's just a thin upward stroke. and you're constantly kind of dipping as well into the ink. And so once you kind of get confident working on the kind of the structure with the X height and the guidelines moved in, I also like to kind of work with this a bit more freely and you can kind of forget the guidelines. So I'll turn off the, turn off the light box. And so you start to kind of get this breaking away, which is quite free and you get a lot more movement as well in the strokes. So I'm gonna do the demo of the word quick here. And often it's easy just to initially draw that, again, that really loose pencil inline stroke. And then you're remembering the basic elements that make up all the letter forms. So you've got that downward stroke, fast flick, With a U, you want to make sure that this upward stroke is an upward curve rather than a straight line so it doesn't get confused for an M. Downward stroke, flick. And sometimes it's easy to keep on going without stopping and then come back and put the dot on the eye at the end so you don't break the rhythm. There you go. That's pretty much the bolsa technique.